What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at how I personally mix down my beats and go into the mastering chain a little bit as well. So stay tuned if that's something that you're interested in. If you want to make your beats slap, if you want to make them disgusting, if you want to make them saucy and drip and just hit people in the face like it's an 18 wheeler going down the highway that just got off and found its way into your home, then this is the video for you. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already. Make sure to smash that like button. And leave a comment of something most ridiculous thing you can think about. I wanna read how sick and twisted you are. So let's dive right on in. So this is the beat that I cooked up last time in my structuring video. So we're just gonna go on in, use it again for this one. It might even be the same day and I'm just wearing a different outfit, who knows? But I don't have two hats on, so that's super important. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, make sure to go back and watch the video on how to structure beats and how to wear two hats at the same time. So everything's pretty bare on this track right now, other than um, my 808 fattener on the bass, but I can take that off and show you guys what it is, what it do without, with. So it just has a ton of saturation, a ton of disgusting high end. It's got my side chain here for the compressor so that I can duck the kicks. And side chaining your kicks to the 808 is super important when you're mixing down a beat. It just lets the whole room breathe. You don't get that pumping effect unnecessarily that you don't want. And something I love about the 808 or the EQ8 in Ableton is that with this little knobby thing, little arrow, you can see on the large frame what key you're, you're mixing in. So I got this saved, we're in F minor. So I know if we bring it down just a little bit, we're just cleaning out that low end, that muck, that mud, that big fat part that no one can even hear. It just takes up space. And then also a bit of the high end as well. So we're going to bring that in. And we don't want to roll off so much that like we lose that top resonance in the 808s that really makes it stand out on something like a phone or, you know, realistically a phone, your uh, computer speakers, anything like that. Obviously, these guys can handle a bit more. Um, and then something like a venue. Something like a venue though, their bass is so big that you really don't need to pump it as much as you think in your production. Now, your kick and your bass should still be kind of the front end of when you're mixing, but if you listen to any like top charting tracks these days, 808 isn't as loud as the kick, you know? It's, it's always a bit back. So first thing in mixing, we're gonna get the levels right. And I like how that's sounding. You can hear, We've got, uh, let's see, there's the kick, right? So we got that ducking out. Oh, just filthy. Absolutely disgusting. So next thing I wanna do, I wanna go in, I wanna get my kick fattener on, my fat kick preset. And all that it is here, it's a mono, which is a, a stock plugin under utilities. Just got the little mono switch on. I just like making triple, triple sure that that, that, that kick's like dead here. You don't want a stereo kick. Um, roll off some low end here as well. And then uh, we can tune this here. So cool, that's set to F. I got the soft tube saturator and this is a free plugin for you guys. So definitely go check this out, pick it up if you don't have it already. A little, little bit of uh, compression, just at 1.5 ratio, you know, it's as, like it's doing as little as possible, but it's just catching the front ends. And you can hear with it, without it. Without it, it just sounds like plah, plah. With it, it just tightens it just the smallest bit. Maybe it's my safety wheels that I like to put on my training wheels. Um, and that really helps like let it breathe. Um, we got my EQ comp set up here. We're gonna start bringing that in for stuff like the rims. 
Mm. So there's a ton of uh, great videos on what the compressors do. Quick rundown, your attack, your release, your ratio, your threshold, and your makeup gain. Your attack is how quick the compressor's coming on. Your release, how quick that uh, compressor is letting go of the sound. Your ratio is how much, like two to one, four to one, that it's compressing it. Um, so for every four decibels, you're getting one out of it. Um, then the threshold is where in the sound it's gonna come and start biting on the sound to kind of tame it. Um, so, you know, if you want some transients to come through, meaning that the beginning of that sound, you wanna let like the attack breathe a little bit. Uh, this is the SSL uh, compressor from Native Instruments, which is a great compressor. You'll see me use it a ton. Uh, auto is always nice for something where you're not really like desperate, you know, on where it breathes. Um, obviously quick release is a very short compression then. Um, and your makeup gain is just gain staging once you've got it compressed to bring it back to the volume you had it at before. So with it, without it, with it. I don't know if you can hear it necessarily on your end, unless you've got some good speakers. It just tames it. And I like a tame clap, a tame snare. I know a lot of people don't necessarily always uh, compress their claps or their snares as much they say it's a good sample and yes it needs to be a good sample first and foremost gotta be a good sample you don't want to do too much production but you mean you're producers so get used to like you know manipulating what you can so we're just rolling off some low end here the reason you want to roll off low end on the things that are supposed to be high is it creates space down below for your 808s and your kicks to really come through and that beefs up your 808s without actually turning up the volume of them or, or your kicks without turning up the volume. It creates stereo field as well as uh, make sure there's no masking happening. It's also the reason why in the kicks and 808s that I have the high end rolled off is so that I let the claps kind of come through and ring. So together, and that's sounding super nice now. So we're gonna come in, we're gonna do the perk, and I'm just soloing them. You don't always have to solo them, but I, I like to solo just to see what a, is happening to each specific track. I love this. Yeah, you've probably seen me use this sample before. It's just like this creepy, wet, dungeon, folly kind of sound. In this, I'm rolling off some low end, I'm rolling off some high end, and then I'm taking a chunk out of the middle. The reason I'm taking a chunk out the middle is that's where vocals gonna be. That's also where um, the keys are gonna come in a little bit. And so I just don't need to crowd that as much. So with it, without it. Without it, you hear it's a lot sharper. It's a lot more high end. With this, a lot more tame. And I'm gonna actually bring down the threshold just to get it licking a little bit. Because something like this, you know, it doesn't need to doesn't need to be stealing the track. This is literally Foley, this is, a, this is a perk, and it's just there to give it that feel, right? And something like this, and this is a little uh, stereo field trick I love. Auto pan, subtle stereo. And this is just now, it's kind of doing this for your sound, you know? If you didn't notice, I'm in my Palm merch, got the Palm hat going. You can grab this merch on my website, www.palmbaker.com. Nice and easy, nice and clean. If you want something classy, if you want to impress your girlfriend, if you want to impress your boyfriend, I don't care who you dating, how you dating, maybe it's a three situation where, you know, it's this girl from this time at this point, but it's also Wednesdays is with this chick over here, and maybe I'm a lizard but get some merch because I highly recommend some of this steezy, fresh, palm merchandise. I just had to put the plug in there, guys. You know how it is. So diving right back into it, we've got, at this point, the 808, we got the kick, we got the rim, we got the claps, we got the perks. 
And what you can really see, like my workflow has been blessed because I'm not diving through every plugin I have. I've got a too much. There's probably 600 plugins and I maybe use 30 of them. So, you know, obviously if you're a producer yourself, you know how that is. You end up buying a ton of plugins early on thinking that's what's going to end up saving the life of your production. But it only does if, if you know how to use them. And like anything else, when you use it a million times, you develop your favorites. So some of these are just uh, ones that I, I really used early on. I loved how they worked. I loved the flow. Others, you know, uh, like the RC20, which is just a classic for getting some verb in there, some distortion, some radio effect. Unreal. And that's like relatively new, but one of those classics that once you use it, you're like, that was missing. Other than that, you know, million and one plugins do the same thing. It's just what interface you like best. So what I'd recommend is, you know, setting your presets. So I'll show you how I do that. Oops solid bus compressor so here we are eq solid bus compressor command g in ableton groups it and then there's this little save button down here and with that you hit it you go in and you see it's right above my eq comp setup i'm gonna remove it because i already have that setup but that's how you go about it so then Every time I want to control some EQ, I want to control some transients, I want to add some compression, I just got it right there. Same here with the 808 fattener. Um, it's a bit different. I got the bass mono and I'm actually going to put that on full mono right now. Got the camel crusher right here on the British clean going into my EQ8 and then a sidechain compressor. So. You can really make up whatever and I'll show you my mastering rack as well, but that's a good place to start and a little tidbit of trick, tidbit of knowledge, little trick that you guys can take with you that, uh, you know, you can save your presets, you can save them how you want. I'd recommend um, not doing too much with them when you save them. Um, you know, you don't want to have everything saved to like one key but then you, you change it to a different key and then you got to change it all anyways. So a flat EQ, you know, a pretty solid, easy to use solid bus compressor. If you're someone like me that knows that like I'm, you know, for most of it, I'm going to be chilling at the 1.2 to ratio. Um, you can leave it there, but I don't recommend getting crazy with it. So we're going to dive back in. I want to see how this works on the ride. And I, I kind of want the ride mad compressed for this one, just to make it that extra drill track. I'm gonna roll off a ton of the low end there. Maybe even a bit of that high end, just to let like vocals take that space. And I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna grab my auto pan. And it just goes back, it's blessed, it's so nice. We're gonna go in, user presets. If you're wondering, it goes user, library, presets, and it's in the audio effects, but audio effects rack, but cool. I hope that helps. So as I'm editing the video, I'm realizing I'm gonna have to probably do a two part series on this one. There's so much information and I don't wanna leave anything out. I hope you guys are getting a ton of value out of this. I appreciate each and every one of you for being here, hanging out on the channel. Love you guys so much and I'll see you in part two.